Are you experiencing natural hair thinning? Well, if you are guys, you're gonna to wanna to watch this video because I'm going to be discussing six possible causes and six possible ways to fix this. Please be aware guys, there's not actually a one size fits all method to overcome natural hair thinning. What I do might not necessarily work for your cells, but these are the methods that I'm going to be showing you that I've tried and tested myself and I can say they actually work. So I've put this one as number one because for me, it was the number one reason why I had hair thinning. Yes, guys, I had hair thinning. Now, some of you may think this is obvious because I'm a natural hair YouTuber and I do a lot of things to my hair. The things that I were doing to my hair wasn't necessarily the things that caused my hair thinning. The reason being, guys, was the number one factor for me was stress. Now, there are multiple variants of stress that can cause your hair to thin. However, my stress was just dealing with trying to balance family life, being a stay-at-home mom, as well as being a self-employed entrepreneur. Now, it didn't actually happen overnight. However, I did notice over time, I'd say within the last six months, I noticed that my hair around this area started getting thin. Now, guys, some of you may think, well, you've had your hair in a protective style for the last year and you may feel that this is the reason for my hair thinning. The reason why I know it's not because I know my body and I know where my hair thinning started to occur, which was around here and also around the back here. These parts of my hair are the finer parts of my hair. So my hair in these areas, as I said, I don't necessarily do hair typing, but those parts, if you just want to have a reference, would be around 3A. What I started to notice was that my stress almost became, well, I wouldn't say almost, did become chronic. And I first noticed it, not with my hair, as I said, it started gradually. But what I noticed was I was eating more because I was stressed. And you suffer from anxiety like myself, or you suffer from worrying like myself, your body tends to be triggered by these these factors. Hence why over time you start to notice these effects happening in your body and it can have a result in your hair leading to hair loss. So I became so overwhelmed with work and balancing family and what have you, I stopped doing my meditation, I stopped doing yoga and then I would snack on like sugary foods and stuff like that. However, I, I will get onto what we intake in our body, okay? So guys, one of my fixes for these was really be present in the moment. I'm a worrisome person anyway, not because I just like to worry, but I like things to be a certain way because I like it to be presented a certain way. So what I started to do, I've got back into my yoga and I've got back into my meditation. I actually meditate whilst I'm driving. Yeah, that sounds crazy. You don't have to sit there with your eyes closed. Meditation can just solely be breathing. And what this does, breathing, holding onto the steering wheel, brings me back to being present. So I calm myself down. Any Anytime I get anxious or nerves when I'm driving, I choose to pick my battles. It's a very hard thing to do. I'm highly irritable at times. <laughs> However, I realize being highly irritable is not worth my health. That's my tip for relieving stress. If you want me to do a longer video on how to relieve stress, solely dedicated to relieving stress, then I can do that for you guys, okay? So this brings me on to number two, which is, again, stress, stress on your hair. So what I mentioned before, i.e. braiding your hair, protective styling, just tight styles on your hair that create tension and then in turn can create traction alopecia. And when I was, I was 14, 14 or 15, and I remember I was going to secondary school and I had a really good hairstyle. My hair was super thick. This is when I started discovering my curls and this is just before I relaxed my hair. So I had a really nice cute little hairstyle as you did back then in the 90s. My hair was gelled quite tightly. So I had a middle part in, my hair was gelled. And then I had hair bands up here with my hair coming down in nice little ringlets and I styled it with dark and lovely gel. It was a cute style back then. I don't think um, a lot of people at my school were ready for it. I was a bit too uh, advanced for their hairstyles back then. <laughs> but I was experimenting. So it was only one day I ever wore this style. Reason being because I'd done my hair up here, it was too tight. Do you know what I mean when you take your hair out of a hairband after a long day? If you take your hair out of a hairband, you're just like, oh, the relief. The relief of the tension, your hair's just, oh, it feels good. My hair was really tight here to the point where my hair was weeping. Yes, it was that tight, guys. And that was just for one day. So I learnt my lesson, didn't do it again. Okay, so that's the type of tension you can put on your hair. And I did lose some hair, but luckily it grew back. I left my hair alone and it grew back and my scalp healed. Everything was cool. This is another type of tension that some people may not be familiar with. And that is flexi rods. 
So I again used to use flexi rods on my hair and what I used to do is because I didn't want my roots to be really tightly coiled and then my hair to be loose curls from the flexi rods, so I'd roll up the flexi rods and I'd get to my scalp and I'd tighten it really taut. No, my scalp was aching. The hair was cute, the hairstyle was cute, but it wasn't worth the stress on my head. It wasn't worth the headache, literally. Another thing I will say that causes tension on the hair is brushing, especially with extremely hard brushes. Now, I got a brush, I don't know where it is at the moment, silly me. I got a brush from the hair shop thinking, okay, this can really smooth my hair down. I literally scraped it across, and that's what I'm saying, scraped. I scraped it across my hair and I just felt my hair snapping straight away, just like that. The brush feels like a wire brush. It felt hard to the touch, but I thought, you know, let's just give it a go. And that, guys, not only causes breakage of your strands, but again, you're ripping out your hair from the roots, so that can cause hair thinning and hair loss. Oh, in regards to tension as well, last one, I forgot this, blow drying your hair. Yes, there are methods of how to blow dry your hair. Now I'm not talking about the tension method where you hold your hair taut, but not too taut that it hurts, but taut enough that you're blow drying your hair and your hair dries in that state. I'm not talking about that, I'm talking with the comb attachment and you're just combing, combing through your hair. It does pull your hair at the roots, guys. I've experienced it. Be gentle with your hair. Try and be as gentle to your roots as possible. The hair is new, the hair is soft, the hair is fragile, and our hair texture anyway is fragile. So just, just, just go easy on your hair. Okay, so number three, as I mentioned, I'm going to talk about food intake. So with food intake, guys, I do notice that when I'm not eating healthier or eating a balanced diet, I don't, I don't necessarily mean healthier, but I mean eating a balanced diet. There's, for me personally, there's nothing wrong with having a takeaway once in a while. Um, living on takeaways, no. And my first sign, before anything to do with my hair, my first sign that I recognize are my nails. They start to break and become brittle. My skin... I suffer sometimes, touch wood, I haven't had any <laughs> breakouts so far recently in the last few months, but I usually get an acne breakout and usually that's hormonal. So the type of foods that I do tend to have, I always always try and have avocados in my diet during the week, beetroots and beetroots I have as smoothies with a banana spinach smoothie, a little zhuzh it up with a bit of nutmeg and coconut milk, there you go, got yourself a good old smoothie. And also guys, I do take some vitamins. So I take my iron vitamins. Not so much now because I'm getting a lot more greens, i.e. black curl. Definitely spinach that I have. Avocado, absolutely. It's got those fatty amino acids that you need for your hair. Make sure you drink your water, guys. I tend to stay away more from like sugary beverages. So yes, guys, your water intake. You have to think of your hair. I'm sure you've heard this and I've said it before. You have to think of your hair as a plant. You're watering it. Not only watering it when you wash your hair, you've got to water it from the inside out. If your hair is not getting, if your body, sorry, is not getting the water that it needs, your hair is not going to get the water that it needs. The water, the moisture, the minerals are going to go to the parts of your body, i.e. your organs that need it most. And then your hair is not going to thrive because whatever minerals you're not having, not taking, if you're not taking the the daily intake or the amount that you should be having required for men or women. If you're not taking enough, the minerals can be taken from your hair follicles and used for your organs, your vital organs that need those minerals, therefore meaning that your follicles will not thrive and eventually they will come out, okay? Causing hair thinning. Number four is a clean scalp. Please, please, please clean your scalp. As some of you may know, I use hair grease. I use hair grease all the time. I do put hair grease on my scalp and I notice the thriving and the hair growth from using hair grease. Seals in the moisture. However, guys, it can suffocate your scalp. It does say on the hair grease jar to use it daily. I don't use it daily because for me, it's a bit too excessive. If my scalp starts to get dry, then I will put some more hair grease, but only a light, thin layer, guys. So when it's time to wash your hair, you need to clarify your scalp properly because your hair will not be able to flourish. So I'll give you this analogy. So if you're going to paint, would you paint on a dirty canvas? No. You want a clean canvas, a clean start. You're not going to redo your hair with product buildup, dry scalp, and you're going to have a nice new fresh start. It won't look fresh, it won't last, and basically your hair will start to fall out. It will over time, guys. 
to number five. It leads on from number four. So as I said, you're going to need to clarify your scalp. If you do want me to talk about the products that I use to clarify my scalp, again, I can do a dedicated video for that separately, but for now, and that's to review your products. I've done a video about why I've stopped doing wash and goes. There were numerous reasons, but one of the main reasons were there was a certain type of gel that I was using, which is very popular in the industry. I don't know if it is so much now. I know there was a bit of controversy to it. I'm not saying the name. If you go back and watch some of my wash and go videos on my channel, you may see what product I'm talking about. All in all, the product was quite good on my hair to begin with. Then after a while, I noticed that it felt like a glue. Let's put it that way. So when my hair was in a wash and go, when it was time to fluff my hair or separate my curls, I could feel my curls kind of breaking and over time, when I created this type of style, my hair would start to pull away at the roots. I would notice that my I could see my scalp a lot more and my parting seemed a bit bigger. When I stopped doing the wash and goes, as I said, I've put my hair in a protective style, left it alone. My hair's doing what it needs to do, okay? It's flourishing, it's grown back, it's perfect. Yes, guys, so definitely reassess your products. As I said, if you are using hair greases, there are certain hair greases that are light pomades. There are certain hair greases that are waxes. Please do not put any wax on your scalp, guys. If you're going to put anything on your hair, they are light pomades. If you're not necessarily um, interested in using oils, I've used oils from time to time, but I prefer the, the hair greases for my hair, personally. Anyway, okay. Okay, and number six, this kind of goes back to the scalp. So I've talked about cleansing your scalp. What to do whilst you're cleansing your scalp is to take care of your scalp properly. Don't just put shampoo on it and wash it off. Put another lather or shampoo on your hair and then wash it off again. You need to massage your scalp. What this does is rejuvenate those hair follicles. It stimulates them. Massaging your scalp gets the blood flowing and it encourages growth. Okay, so when you're cleansing your scalp, not only does it lift off the buildup, but it also stimulates your scalp for hair growth. So those are my six causes of hair thinning and hair loss and my six possible fixes. I hope these work for you. They have worked for me. And if you do have any more suggestions or questions, you can leave your comments down below in the comment section. To conclude, hair thinning can be prevented and sometimes even reverse depending on the cause of the hair thinning. So unfortunately, hair thinning and hair loss can be caused by stress. However, when your hair starts to thin or you start to lose your hair, you can then stress, which is, is such a cruel cycle, guys. It just goes round and round. So this is why we need to try and eliminate stress as much as possible, not only for your hair, but also for your general overall health. So as I said, if you are, are experiencing any stress, high stress levels, and you want to find something that can help you to relax, and you would also like for me to make a dedicated video regarding how to reduce your stress even further in, in more detail, then I can do that. But for now, guys, if you just want to relax, Take a deep breath and listen to this brown noise.